Samaras in Switzerland, the only natural hand-built bobsleigh track in the world. The venue for the 2023 World Championships. We head into the final day of competition of our two-man championship. Martin Haven and Greg Cackett ready to see our 26 survivors from day one's 30 starters make it down in the final two runs. And Greg, the big intrigue is going to be who takes the gold medal here. In the last seven World Championships, it's been Francesco Friedrich. Yeah, but you don't want to look at the four-man and the two-man at the moment on World Cup. It is Hansi Lochner. It is all about this guy and Georg Fleischhauer, who has given him just the most booming starts. We're seeing the pictures here of Michi Vogg, who was fantastic in the first heat, but got uh, picked off by, by the German guys. We've got Friedrich currently sitting in second. He's got the Ferrari Alex Schuller on the back. Great to see Friedrich pushing hard again, going for this, taking that top three start. He'll be wanting to go back to the top of the start ranks. He'll need to tidy up his drives as well today, though, if he wants to get himself back on the gold medal position, because he's three-tenths currently from his countrymen. Well, Hansi Lochner led overnight in the Olympic Games in Beijing, only for Friedrich to come surging past him. But Georg Fleischauer, he is a renewed man in the two-man this year, all but unbeatable. It is going to be the clash of the titans. Two hits for Hansi to take the gold. Yeah, what a race we've got on our hands here. And, and you know what? In the entire World Championships, this is perhaps the grudge match because since 2012, Friedrich has not lost a major championship, world or Olympic, in a two-man sled. Since 2012, this is the third, 11th straight season then that he is looking for that two-man gold. And this is what it's about for him, four-man whatever, it's about that two-man legacy. Yeah, and he loves the challenge as well. So you're looking at a 3,200 deficit there. If anyone can overturn that, it's Francesco Friedrich. You know, the home ice boy, uh, Mickey Vogg, super talented pilot. He's a good start. He is not far from Friedrich, and he is going to be wanting to keep away my guys, Brad Hall and Taylor Lawrence, who are going to be shooting for a medal too. And don't write off Christoph Haffer. The guy is flying. Well, there is Brad Hall. Brad and the TBM team. hat. Yeah, Taylor Lawrence, and there you can see Christoph Half, one of the tallest athletes in the field. Air temperature hovering around minus six, feels every bit of that in the shade. In fact, it feels about 10 degrees colder than that. And the ice is still very cold as well. The morning frost has gone. The overnight ice temperature is about minus 12, so it will be fast and slick. And as the day goes on, unlike any other ice track on the planet, it gets quicker, so you have to adapt immediately in the really slow first corners to how the ice is today or you give away time you'll never find back and that is going to be the challenge for all of our drivers that and horseshoe horseshoe yeah. claimed three feet I, I can't tell you a time where more than one sled in an entire weekend has crashed in horseshoe we had three yesterday in two runs so this track is not benign. We've also lost uh, Simon Friedley from our start list. He tore his hamstring, his uh, calf muscle, really badly again yesterday in the second push, and he will not start. Third heat of the two-man bobsleigh world championships in Samritz. Hansi Lochner and Georg Fleischauer for Germany, the overnight leaders, three tenths in hand over Francesco Friedrich, the seven-time consecutive world champion. Look at the load. Is going to turn the tables? See the load from the big man there. This guy is enormous. He's six foot five, six foot six, and rapid. But he loads like a smaller guy, and this is why Hansi's getting not just a great start time, but great velocity. A 5.06 from the net, and it is still cold up there so we'll see how that stacks up on the day they're accustomed to being number one has he given Hansi the speed he needs well 506 is what Francesco Friedrich and Alexander Schuller pushed in both their starts these guys had an 02 and 03 yesterday they're nice and neat and tidy yes. from Snake down through Sonny and Nash and Dixon here's Horseshoe the signature corner and a great exit Lochner now watch the exit of Shamrock here 
Beautifully oh. through. Okay, Hansi's going to be taking some serious speed into this. He wants this world title. He does not want to give it away. This German two-man, this FESZ, flies, and it flies even more under the hands of Francesco Friedrich, Christoph Hafer, and Hansi oh. Lockner. But they are, he is absolutely flying. A couple of taps down the straight. Run. For some reason, we're not getting speeds from Lockner, but across the line, 105.26. That is a big, big run, only 400 slower than his second run yesterday on what would have been faster ice. And that looked like, until the straight down to Martino and Paul Targo, that looked like an inch-perfect run. Yeah, Hansi wants this. He does not want to give it away. It's one of the things we love about Hansi. He can mess around. He can seem like the clown prince sometimes at Bob's Day, but it's all a bit of a, bit of a facade at times. He knows how to turn it on. He knows how to be a serious competitor. And these lines, he gets through. This is where, watch Shamrock here. It wants to push everyone to the inside wall. Gets through it beautifully. Well, Francesco Frugic has been a seven-time consecutive world champion. In that time, Johannes Lochner has had four silvers and a bronze. He does not want either of those this time around. And 32 hundredths of a second is a big margin. But this is the greatest bobsledder, especially two-man exponent of all time. Beautiful load. Watch the start. Oh, oh, but two. But a this big guy hit. is Mr. Responder. Big hit on the wall. Yes, they always go harder. Yeah, they find those extra hundreds. 502. They will have hated seeing third rank starts yesterday. And look at that, they put three hundredths on Gail Fleischhauer and Hansi Lochner. Little oh. Bessie out of wall. Yeah, again, not as clean as he could be. Better into Sonny. He was skidding there yesterday, but the gap is still at 26 hundredths. He's not bringing it down. And that is very uncharacteristic, Francesco Friedrich. It's not the start. He's just not driving like he can. He's got number one speed beautifully off Shamrock. Now, will he pick up speed? This, hey, this is Francesco Friedrich we're talking yep. about. But it's the same oh, set as Lockner. The gap's out to half a second. He's still got better speed. It's where you might just... Is he going to close the, the margin? He needs to be within 1,500s in the final heat, or it's just not going to happen unless Hansi gives him the gold across the line. Seven tenths back. Wow. Look at that. Hey, that is a big gap. And that's just those, you can see those mistakes up the track. Even if you're Francesco Friedrich, this track is taking no prisoners this year. If you get it wrong up the top, you're just wiping your speed. Well, Hansi Lochner wow. has been in the best form of his entire career, I would argue, this season. It's just got that feeling that everything is working for him that seemed so hard before. Yes, Friedrich's been injured since Christmas, but France was right there before Christmas. Yeah, and you know what? You saw that big hit into kink one. Maybe they pushed it a little far in the Look start. Look at the ice he's carving. We've yeah. not seen that from anybody. It's a different type of pressure, you know. Look, France has been back before, but he's yeah. not had consecutive weeks of not being so firmly well, on the now, podium. The question now is then, does he get silver? Because Mickey Vogt, who led the first heat, yeah, was only going. seven hundreds behind Friedrich. And they had good starts yesterday, a 509 and a 511. Sandro is going to be wanting to give Mickey everything he can do. Like Listen, every hundreds that's, is essential. That's all they need to do. Don't overrun it into the first king. Come out clean In and down drive the track. It's the drive that's going to do it for Vogt, and that's, that's cleaner push. than Friedrich. Now, Mickey knows how to carry speed down this track. He knows how to drive this track. Second best speed. Friedrich had the highest velocity, higher than Lochner because of that quicker start. Now, let's see how he navigates wall. Does he get out clean? He's pretty good. Little tap, but this is pretty good. He keeps it square. Now, he's 3,900s down on the leader, 5,300s down on Lochner, but it's about Friedrich in second place. It's about beating the GOAT. That's it, and he's about three tenths down on Friedrich at the moment. Holding it two tenths now on down on Friedrich. Number one speed, gets reasonably clean through Shamrock. He's got to be absolutely clean as a whistle into these big four right-handers. Tree first, watch the exits, middle left, get nice and early onto the next corner, carry that speed through. This is excellent from Mickey. He is giving it everything. 2013 oh, Worlds here. Good. Friedrich claimed his first gold. Bert Hefty and Thomas Lampard oh, took silver. And across the line, seven tenths back. How close to Friedrich? 100, 100 in it for the silver medal, because it is not about the gold now.
Well, unless Lochner literally crashes, no one else is going to win this in one heat. It is a hundred for silver. And we've got two more sets coming who are going to stake their claim for it as well. Friedrich was not clean in his run. Mickey took full advantage. That's all you can do. He found 1100s on Friedrich. 1200s would have tied them. Wow. Yeah, this is what game a race on. We've got. Now, who else is going to throw their hat into the ring? Realistically, there is only one other potential challenger, and this is him. Brad Hall with Taylor Lawrence behind him. So he started second fastest in both heats and came down 1600s off silver. And look for a big start from the big Raw Marine on the back. Taylor's been in blistering form this year. Brad has come back to health. He's come into a huge purple patch with his driving. See the sponsors, Altus on the side there, powering, keeping us on ice this season. It will be in about boys. the drive again. A zero something will be enough. Five Clean enough, 506. Equals Lochner and Fly Shower. Second best speed. Now, for those watching at home, this part is essential. He's got to keep it straight. Who's brought bagpipes? Loving that. Half a second behind the leader, and that puts him right in the frame with Friedrich and Vogt. Good exit of Wall. He's managed that well. So we can get round Sonny and through Nash and Dixon nice Losing and clean. Losing almost nothing to Hansi Lochner. He is right in the frame. Brad is flying here. Height in nice horseshoe, horseshoe, lands it nicely. Telephone, Shamrock, Devil's Dyke, nudged away. Best speed of all, He's faster than speed. Lochner. Faster than Friedrich, faster than Vogt. Customer-built BTC sled. The Germans drive their own FES sleds. The Swiss have their own sleds. This is an off-the-peg customer sled. Second best speed for Brad Hall. Is he going to overhaul Mickey Votes? How close? 1,400, 1,500s out of the medals. One run, one run. 1,500s covering silver, bronze, and fourth. I don't know if I'm going to get through the whole transmission here. This is keeping me... Oh, wow. It's all right. We'll calm down in a minute. But <laughs> this is a two-man race, the likes of which we have not seen in a decade in the World Championships because Friedrich is not walking away. And this is what the sport needs. We need to see this. Huge starts from talented athletes, huge drives from talented athletes from smaller programs. You know, with this, these are off-the-shelf uh, kit and equipment. It is not produced in an engineering, you know, uh, firm. It is, it is a huge, huge result for these guys. And... Hey. And it is still a tiny one sled team. I, I, you know what? I'm and really proud the, of the and guys. And the Germans have got great... four sleds in here. Yeah. The Swiss have got three. And don't write off this sled. Yeah. Hey, Christoph Harper, he could spring a surprise. He did in the Olympic Games. He and Matthias Sommer, his brakeman, were the bronze medalists behind Hansi Lochner, the silver, and Francesco Friedrich, the gold. So a 5.20 getaway for these guys, for the Olympic bronze medalists. Matthias Sommer is an absolute rocket. He gives Ooh, Harper... Not a great start. Harper was there, stood still as the sled started moving. In and down, 20 to beat. 18. And Haffer, using all of his experience there, keeping that pilot handle out. Same as he did the first two runs. So Matthias has, has given him everything he needs here. He's earned his money, he's dropped the start. And a push in the teens, that's a, that's a really respectable push. Yep. Ooh, a little skiddy there from Christoph. We saw those two taps also from Friedrich. There's two tenths down on Brad. Everybody using the fattest run as they can. It spreads the pressure across the ice, causes less, fric less friction. Here we go, it's a nice exit. Third best speed so far, beautifully out of Shamrock. He's it's going to be Devil's Dyke very close with Brad Hall. He was only 600s behind Brad. Here we go. Second best speed from the German sled. This is going to be bringing him close to Brad Hall. It's this a good is exit. It is. Bringing him into the medal contention as well. We could have a four-way spread for two medals. How close at the line does he come? He is 9400s back, a tenth behind Brad Hall. 2400s out of the medals. That might be a stretch in one run. Everybody at the top of this tree is too good to give away massive amounts, barring an utter disaster. Absolutely. Like you say, you know, they, they have selected, we think, fatter runners pretty much across the field. How that's going to play out in the next heat, we'll see when the ice gets a bit more slippery, a bit more difficult to control. Mistakes could abound, so... Again, look at this. 
Matthias Sommer is moving, the sled is moving, even as Christoph Harfer comes out of the squat. That's not a consistent hit. It's not a coherent hit. Hey, sometimes, sometimes the consistent can be fast. Sometimes when you yeah. just, you know, like we used to say with the, the Rico Pida, you know, sometimes it's, letting it's it fly faster is fast. than they, It's faster than they were, it's better than they were, but yeah. it can be better still there. That synchronicity is not yet there. Okay, one to go for Christoph Harfer. Now, is he going to be looking in the rear view mirror? Emil Tsipoulis of Latvia is heading the next pack, but it is a long stretch. From nine to six hundreds off, he's four tenths behind Harfa. So five twelve. Clean though. The guys. Clean through the first corner again. Not running it too deep and steering that first corner with no dramas. He didn't touch the wall. He's the first athlete not to have a tap and a skid. So yeah, doing what he needs to do to hold on to this top six position. He's got big Mattis Mickness on the back. One of the literally the best brakeman Latvia has ever produced. Former basketball player. He's an absolute. Turbocharger on the back. Out of Sunny. Emil's driving better. Through Nash and Dixon. Tap. Little tap there. He had a tiny tap as well. Out of wall as everybody has. Out of horseshoe. Clean down into telephone. Flops off into Shamrock. That gives him the hit in Devil's Dyke. Only the fourth best speed. He's sitting almost three tenths back from Haffer, but he's then stopped the bleed there. Now, has he got slightly thinner runners to give him more driving control early on to stop bleeding that speed away? In which Next case. Step. More friction. He's not going to catch Harfa. How far back in the line can he keep? 105.61. That away. was quicker than Harfa. So he has reeled in a little on Christoph Harfa. That was quicker than Brad Hall as well. Track will get faster as we run through all of our 27 sleds, 26 sleds now in this heat. And they go 20 to 1 in the final run. Yeah, a really good run from Emils there. He's, you know, he's the next generation after Kibamanis, Melbardis, you know, the great pilots that year have had. I'm not sure what Oscar's plan is for, for next year in the approach to Milan, but Emils keeping the seat warm so far. He's really improved. Hey. Emils is not keeping a seat warm for anyone. He is making his own case. He's had a really great month. Now then, a final day in the office for two men who have been a big part of the bobsledding fraternity for the last decade. Roman Heinrich and his brakeman, Dorian Oteville. The team here for the final time. This will be the last day we see Roman Heinrich driving bobsleds competitively. The last time we see B. Dorian on the back of the sleds. All four boys are here for this swan song for French bobsledding's Roman Heinrich. And Dory gave him a pair of 519s yesterday. Really good pair of pushes. He's still dropping a sub 11 second 100 meter times, even as a big bobsleigh boy. A little hard around the first kink. 22. It's a solid getaway. We'll see how it stacks up with the rest of the circuit. But again, Roman, he's, he's another athlete who really understands the drive. He understands the feel of the sled. And he lives and breathes bobsleigh. Emin Sapoulis just crept ahead of him in the second heat yesterday. He was sixth after the first run. His best result in the World Championships last time out in Altenburg, eighth place. So right now, this is a personal best World Championships for Roman Heinrich. The best place to race, and he may end up with the best finish of his career. Yeah, and he's got, I think yesterday we saw that 509 push from Sapoulis, which really helped rocket him forward. There's that number one speed from Heinrich, and he's nicely out of Shamrock. Absolutely flying. Bruno Mijon's sleds were always super fast. He's got something in sleds, and I don't know what it is. And Roman Heinrich using the most of it. He's got that aerodynamic helmet on as well, Roman. Number that one will speed. save him a couple of hundreds. Better speed than any of the Germans. Better than Mickey Vogt across the line. Still in seventh place, but a great run from Roman Heinrich. I think he's got to be really pleased with that. 90.2 mile per hour. What a top speed. Roman just knows how to find speed. And the setup must be right in the sled. Yep. He's there, he's happy. He's done a great job. Yep. Well and done, boys. One more run to go in their career, and then they can give the aching bones and the tired muscles a bit of a rest. That's it. So I see the load, he got a little bit, little bit stuck there. But in and out, yeah, just kicks out slightly out of the grooves there, ever so slightly. But he had his hands on the D-rings, no major dramas, nice height in horseshoe, and then timing the dive down into telephone perfectly. Little steer straight through telephone, and already looking for Shamrock. One to go for Roman Heinrich. One to go here for Timo Rona and Luca Rolli. Timo Rona 
often the missing man of Swiss bobsledding. Now, he comprehensively earned his spot in the team in the two-man last week in Altenburg and is knocking it out of the park here compared to his previous World Championship performance. And Luca ran that really far, but he loaded brilliantly. He knew there's a Swiss guy who knows how far to take this, these, uh, these start grooves. He managed to get in without any dramas kicking out. But a 5.15 getaway is excellent. Really good pushing from Luca. One two-man world for Timo Rona. That was in Whistler in 2019. He was 25th. And four years on, he is firmly inside the top ten with an eighth best performance on day one of this World Championships. You know what? Let's not forget, Martin. Timo went off first in the first heat. Early ice in Moritz, which is the kiss of death for a lot of people. So to be here just shows how extraordinary well he's driving yeah. and how well Rolly is pushing him. Absolutely. Nice lines again from Timo Rona. Seventh best speed. He had a couple of taps early on. And his margin over the next driver, Patrick Baumgartner, the 2016-2012 Youth Olympic champion, is uh, only a few hundreds of a second. 106-18. First man not to dip into the fives. So not, and you know, his speed's a little down. 87.7 miles an hour, so he's a little down there. But again, we're looking at drivers with less world championship experience. Shakes his head, a little bit disappointed with that, but... Is that enough to drop him into the clutches of Patrick Baumgartner? Baumgartner, again, exceeding by a huge margin anything he's previously done. But look at Rona here. Looking for the exit there. Steers off. Cancel the steer now. Looking to get onto telephone cleanly and then through into Shamrock. But he hits hard early on. That's where the speed went. I think that's probably what he's shaking his head at. Yeah, you need that slingshot effect, and he did not have it. So, has that left the door open for Baumgartner? 2012 Youth Olympic champion in boys bobsleigh. Eric Fantazzini behind him. And a decade on from that, let's see what he's got here in San Moritz. So, Eric is another really strong brakeman in the, in the Italian program right now. We've got the likes of Jose Del Masopu, Eric Fantasini, Robert Messia. They're, they're brilliant athletes. Patrick needs the push because he hasn't got the start in himself. But he has got the drive, oh. and that's not good. Hit the wall going in there, 5.25 to get away, but that will take speed out of the sled. Only his seventh best velocity of nine sleds so far. But yesterday he drove a 21st ranked push into seventh place at the bottom yep. of the track. So and 20th and into ninth, yeah, so he had two very good drives yesterday and that's exactly what he needs again today so after the dramas out of the first kink he's looking okay here I have to say Baumgartner really coming of age this weekend he's never produced this kind of top flight consistency before yeah, takes a, the late tap doesn't push him too far away from Devil's Dyke round nameless here we go find the speed here Patrick Middle left exits, left side entry early on. And let's see him get spat out of Sa Gunter Sachs now. Excellent, beautiful. Was only 1,300 behind Timo Rona. Very good speed indeed at the bottom. And across the line, avoids the wall. And how far behind Rona? He brings the gap down to uh, 1700 in fact that's a fraction slower than rona by 400 so just a slight uh, breathing space for timo rona but again less than two tenths of a second over 1850 meters of tricky ice that could go either way yeah and you know a tenth back in the start even with the beast eric on the back it's always what he might have worked on the load there eric. yeah but you know, it's still a good drive. Yeah, but he taps the wall convert. before they even get to the first corner. That's taking away those two extra steps that Eric ran it. Yeah, we always say, you know, these guys, and, uh, you know, they are the pressure men to deliver for Milan coming up in the next three years as some Italian fans. Yeah. Well, our 10th starter is Austria's Marcus Tricol with the veteran Marcus Samuel behind him now, 37 years old and still an absolute beast on the back of the sled. Yeah. And again, Trichel on target for what could well be a best world championship result for him as an Austrian slider. Yeah, so a best of 5.13 yesterday in the getaway. He's got his pilot bar in beautifully early there. 5.13 getaway again, top six push Next sled as it stands, which is really good going, Marcus. Again, isn't one of the strongest pushing pilots, so in a two-man sled, you know, the boys have got their work cut out, and Sama has just rocketed him off. 
Marcus has had a great year, uh, Trichel that is. He's been driving really well, he's had some great finishes. Little skid there. He needs to hang on to this. He's in the top 10 overnight, does not want to give it away. His most immediate challenge was Seaman Friedley, who was less than two tenths back. Friedley's had to pull out injured, re-injured a calf strain that he was rehabilitating since Christmas. And Lochner, with the, I beg your pardon, Trike, with the best speed of all, quicker than anybody else. Just dropped back to second fastest there, but yeah, he was flying. And he was yesterday as well. What he loses at the start, he gains at the finish. Second best speed. Fantastic run from Marcus Treichel. Is he going to overhaul Baumgartner? Yes, and Rona picks up two spots. Wolfgang Stamper in the center there. He is the sled whisperer of the Austrian team. His sleds, never mind the start, always top speed at the bottom. That's a fantastic run from Marcus Treichel. Very well done, boys. Look at the speed, 90.1 miles an hour. Yeah, you're not oh, hanging around start. here. 5.13 down at the low teens into the O's is, is, is top class starting in Moritz every year. So 5.13 is a great return from both of the guys. But Marcus has just delivered there. Really delivered well. Excellent. So that is the sixth best run of the afternoon so far from Marcus Treichel. He jumps up two spots. And he is currently lying in eighth place after our first ten sleds. Look at that top four. That is uh, going to be a hell of a heat four. Two-man bobsleigh world championships, Sam Ritz. Heat three of four, the fastest ten sleds have gone. Mihai Tente now finds himself in 11th place with the forced withdrawal of 11th place finisher overnight, Seaman Friedli of Switzerland with an injury. And with Chippy and Dorochi, they're going to try and move into the top ten. So they managed the 5.19 yesterday and the 5.20 is another great, great push from the boys. You know, Mihai's, you know, we said yesterday, he's frequently nursing injuries. He's had a few little niggles this year, little hamstring problems, but it's great to see him back pushing properly and not sitting in. And, uh, and that's a great return there. 5.20 from Cipriani is, is brilliant pushing. And the longer this heat goes on, the faster the track will get. So being outside the top 10 doesn't mean you're going to end up inside the top 10. Just saw Marcus Trichel pick off two sleds with a really good run. And again, neat, tidy driving from Mihai Tenter. But a tap in Dixon and then out of Dixon, just taking a bit of speed out of the sled. Yeah, and how often do we see me Hightentea's name on these speed charts later into the uh, yeah. later into the race? He does find speed. Not here though. This run is not from the top draw. This is the loose one that you don't need in the World Championships. Good exit from Gunter Sachs, but it's he's not, not going to pick enough. up a spot. He's not going to get to Patrick Baumgartner. He won't be a long way behind, but he's too far maybe to make a difference. However, 11th place at the moment for Mihai Tenter of Romania. His best was in Altenburg 2020 when he finished 10th. So there is the target, and the gap to Baumgartner is 26 hundreds. But Mihai needs to tidy that up. That was a loose run for him. Yeah, and they started yesterday with the 521. They've gone 520 in the first push today. I want to see them getting down into the teams for Heat 4 to give themselves everything they need to stay or get into the top 10 here. Oh, big steer. Look big there steer, into yeah, the first that. corner. Immediately just tweak the runners. But here, down in the forest, this is where all that top speed went away. Takes the heavy tap out of Shamrock. Not managed that as well as some of the other drivers today. No, so some, that's that's some his worst run on. so far, I'm afraid, for Mihai Tentier when he needed it, needed it least. Now, behind him, Lee Chun Jan and Ding Song, new combination here in the World Championships. These two have not pushed together this season. So here we go again, a low 520s. Yesterday was their best, 521 getaway, which ranked in 15th. So Song is one of gonna give Lee as much in the push here as he can. And a 23 getaway, so same as yesterday's first push. So he's gonna keep this under control now around these first two kings. 23 hundreds behind Mihai Tentea. A good drive here from Lee Chun Jan could really close down that gap. Yeah, so only sits three tenths here at this point. Not too tidy out of wall, but like we said, everybody's struggling with that this year. It's a tricky corner to manage. Little tap going into Sunny as well. More speed coming out of the sled. And again, yeah. from Nash to Dixon. Let's see what he does out of horseshoe. 
taps on the way out of Horseshoe into Telephone. Pushed away into Devil's Dyke as well. Hitting everything in sight at the moment, Lee Chun Chan. Still got seventh best speed out of the 13, 12 sleds so far, so. Bit of a skid into Gunter Sachs. Decent exit though, 10th best speed. You know, these guys are still building confidence. They've come back to the circuit this year. And it's just taken a little bit more time. They've still got top brakemen in the uh, in, in the program as well. I think Song getting the nod for this race. So you want to get that push down to, again, the low 520s or under into the teens. Legendary Latvian Yanis Minin's on the back there, helping get the sled over. So now the exit of Horseshoe here, Martin, but was it, um, I thought they came out a little late, which maybe sent him yeah. late into telephone. Tapped on the wall on the exit, flopped off there, and then straight onto telephone. He didn't have a chance to feed it in at all. Trying to carry that speed out of Horseshoe. First time ever in the World Championships as a driver. He's not even started a World Cup race. Boris Van had to do five races on three tracks in two years to qualify, did them in two months. He is now in his sixth ever bobsleigh race as a driver for Monaco. Boris Van with Antoine Liu behind him making their World Championship debut. And what a day they had yesterday, 5-12 again. So that was their best push yesterday, and they started with it today. Boris was an awesome brakeman. He pushed Rudy Rinaldi to insane times. And he's, a, you know, he's the French junior shot put record holder, yep. you know? And Antoine is also a shot putter. So a pair of throwers on the sled here, which is great to see. And five Europe Cup races under his belt before he comes to the World Championships. This is such a tough track for the very best drivers this year. And he is actually handling it supremely well. Yeah, and he's still only had a couple of runs in this sled. This is the Beijing sled. He's only just gone into it, so he was learning to drive in a Nathas sled, and he's already switched to this, and he's already managing a top 15 so far, his first World Champs. 10th best speed, 13th sled down the track. Here we go. Here's the speed. Building or killing corners. Get yourself on the left side there, Boris. Big promise from Boris Vaz so early in his career. Five races only. Everybody else has done five World Ooh. Cups, six World Cups this season. Hey. Wow. Saved the rest of the Otago. Tenth best run. Tenth best out of 13 sleds. That is a really nice drive again from Boris Vaz. Yeah, takes a spot there. Three hundredths out of the Chinese athletes. That's another close battle. Hey, Boris just wants four good runs. He yep. just wants to get down, enjoy his first World Champs, you know, bank the experience and move on to the next one. Hey, I think Boris is going to be something to, well, something the, to really look at. The guys at the front years. of the field, Lee, Tintia, right ahead of him. They've done six World Cups this year. Yeah. This is only his sixth race ever as a driver. And you know what? I think other development brakemen right now who are, uh, brakemen rather, who are developing as pilots should be watching this thinking, hey, if Boris can do this, I can do this. With no disrespect to Boris, yes. If you can feel it, I think you find out very quickly whether you've got the feel of the ice or not. And I think he has. Next up for the Czech Republic, Adam Dobesh. No Dominic Dvorak this week, I'm afraid. Or next, he will not take part in the World Championships. The leading driver from the Czech Republic. But that means the door is open for Adam Debesh and for fellow newcomer Mati Buhenik, who we'll see later in the run to start their first World Championships in the front seat. He's been a brakeman in the world in Whistler, so he knows what a rough track feels like at speed. But this is a different animal. 5.25 getaway for him and Jakob Prohaska. Yeah, so a couple hundreds off their best yesterday. Hey, and he's taken... Get off the wall, Adam. He's just trying to nudge it across. It's so tricky to, to navigate that part of the track. He's in a tight battle. 700s behind Boris Van, only 500s ahead of Latvia's Jakob's calendar, who comes up next. So any errors here are going to be very costly in terms of position, never mind just time lost on track. Yeah, just had a, you know, a late entry into Nash there, which sent him the wrong side of Dixon. So he's coming out of horseshoe. That's OK. Let's watch his exit of Shamrock. A little square tap, not too bad. And he was only 1,300s ahead of Kim Ji Su of Korea as well. So there's four sleds covered by 1,300s. I doubt they will be in the same order at the end of this run as they were at the beginning. Yeah, and out of Gunter Sachs through the not speed bad. trap into Martino. Not bad. Three tenths from the Chinese athlete. Ooh. 
which is exit from target. Oh, nice exit of Portal. Okay, so 106.40. And that's his fastest run, a fraction quicker than the second one yesterday. Uh, Boris Vann moved up a spot. Let's see if Adam Devesh can at least hang on to 14th place. Jakob's Kalender, 500s back. And Kim Ji Su is 1300s behind him. Yeah, and Adam literally flying the flag at the moment for the Czech rebuild. He's shown real promise. He's a weightlifter by trade. And he's got, you know, good skills on the front handle. Him and Dominic Zalewski have pushed a heavy sled this year to, to really good start times. Uh, Dvorak's currently healing at home. We'll send our best to you, Dominic. And I think Adam uh, doing well here at his first World Champs. Yep, first World Cup season as well. Hansi Lochner, Francesco Frugic, Mickey Vogt, the top three. But it's all about positions further down the order now for Latvia's rookie Jakobs Kalender. First season in the World Cup. Joined us this spring, or after Christmas at least. Haven't got to spring yet. 5'10", get away. That's their fastest. Good job, guys. You've got big Davis Springus on the back. Okay, that guy can push. Watch him in the four-man next week. He will be launching Sabulis to a big time. Really good to see him get the nod for the two-man here. Calendar, a young pilot doing really well yeah, in just... his first season. He's had Kleinbergs in the back as well. Another beast of a man who's given him great starts. They've got such exceptional brakemen in the Latvian program. 20 years old, never raced here before, and trying to reel in Adam Debesh of the Czech Republic. There was so little between them, but these guys started 1500s better. And he's looking good. He took a high line, but it really spat him out of horseshoe. Let's see how he goes through tree. We've got bridge. He'll go under the bridge to go around Lee. And let's... Ooh, little tap before Sachs. If he doesn't skid, he could well be overhauling him. 13th best speed. How close does he get at the line? Is he going to be 15th or 14th? He's 12th ahead of Boris Vann by 100th of a second. That was a smooth-looking run. I was wondering whether he'd had speed at the bottom or whether he would have, because it was smooth enough. I thought, you know what? The coaches may be putting him on runners that give him a little bit more control at the sacrifice of top speed. The top speed numbers weren't huge, but the result was he didn't skid and hit stuff. Hey, and you know what? A 5.13, a 5.14. 14 and a 510 today. So Davis has absolutely done his job yeah. giving his pilot some speed. So he took this high and late line, but he gets shot out at the end. Very late height. And that, according to the coaches, is the best way this year. Dives down Beautiful. right onto telephone. Yeah, no wonder he's nodding in approval. That was a great drive from Jakob's calendar. Moved up four spots. So for Kim Jin Su and Park Samuel, his brakeman, told you about this yesterday. Park has never started any race before officially. He started training in Pyeongchang in Skeleton. He did some training sessions there for a race that he never started and has done training sessions for a bobsleigh race and yet never started before the World Championships. All right, what a way to go. A debut race at the World Championships. That's extraordinary. Yeah, it could only be better if it was your first ever bobsleigh race is the Olympic Games, but you know. <laughs> well, I mean, it's classic bobsleigh, really, anyway. It's single <laughs> swim, you get thrown in right at the deep end. So 24 getaway, they had a 19 getaway yesterday, which was a, a really good push. Again, we said anything in the teens here. So I want to lower that for the fourth uh, heat. Let's see if he gets round. Wall, tricky corner, takes the tap, little skid. Was only 800s behind Latvia's Jakob's calendar, but calendar has just rocketed away. Yeah, now let's cool. see if Kim can use the faster ice that he's got in this heat to try and build his speed as well. You can just see he's taking little taps, little hits kind of everywhere here, which will just be gently scrubbing away at speed. Watch the shamrock tap, push them away a little bit from Devil's Dyke. 13th best speed, we'll go around Nameless now, and here we go, into the speed. Wrap so round. Bridge will go into Lee. Nicely out of there, and let's see his entry, exit of Sachs. Good. Not bad at all. These Korean built sleds, double pressure, three pressures there in Martino. And out of Portago, does not pick up a spot, but he closes to 300s behind Adam Dobesh. So there's a real battle on there as well. I, this is what I love about this sport. I love these little battles all the way down. Everyone jostling for position. No one can give away any mistakes. Brakemen have got to give them every hundredth in the start. But hey, what a first world champs for Park. Yeah, absolutely. 
exit there of right Nash here. and Dixon. Tiniest of brushes on the wall as you hear the trains going by the mites. And up into Horseshoe, and then deep down in the forest. He skidded onto Shamrock, and that threw him late into Devil's Dyke. You saw the double tap there. And in the fast four corners at the bottom of the track, he had the line he needed. This track is... You've got to be able to find the pressure and then let it launch you out. Otherwise, you will skid off corners and your time will disappear. USA's Frank Del Duca in a battle with Pat Norton of Canada. So there's a Can-Am race here. Yeah, man. And Hakeem you know Abdul Sabor behind former brakeman Frankie Del Duca. They were in the teens yesterday with a 16 and a 19. And they get a 12. Hey, there is the brakeman in Frank Del Duca because they have pulled that down massively he's got an ankle injury it's been really nasty he's been dealing with get over to this side 17th sled fourth best velocity at the start don't give too much of it away frankie yeah and you know what frankie's brand new in moritz again he's still a development pilot he's still learning he's building his confidence but with a start like that you know you've got to keep this guy in the front seat keep him developing because this is the next this is the next gen oh he's gone oh frankie just held that late line. Now, we had a nasty school yesterday with Adam Amor and his, his brakeman, Benny, didn't have a burn fest on, so I hope you're doing OK, Mr. Hurtle. Trying to stay in. Yeah, you can see Frank's helmet, quite clearly the yellow, Ooh, sticking hello. way out of the sled, and they're still doing 60 miles an hour down the ice. It's the friction of the ice as you speed across it with Lycra trying to protect your skin and doing little for it, I'm afraid. That's what causes the burns. It's not temperature, it is the friction that burns. The Credit. sled has stopped. And Horseshoe claims its fourth victim in the two-man world championships. I mean, wow, this is... It has really caused problems this year, you know, and that yep. corner you can see there, Portago, the exit was causing problems in training. So we'll just see what he did here, Martin. So watch the runner tips as they come into view. He's got medium height, nothing dramatic. Steers off. Got it. Got it. And exactly as he saw from Adam Amor, the misjudgment is just fractional, but it is enough that he doesn't bring it down off the wall and then the wall is vertical. Oh, I just hope Huck's got his Kevlar on because you can just see the big man's big left shoulder piling into well, the ice you there. Saw, and I thought, it was Frank, I thought it was Frankie that had the yellow helmet. It wasn't. It was Hakim who's got the yellow helmet. There you see Frankie's black helmet, but further down the run, Hakim is two-thirds out of the sled, and there is a lot of him to be out of the sled as well. He is a huge unit, Hakim abdul Sabur. I say, I just hope he's wearing his Kevlar. So, as a brakeman, you see this, and it's... Yeah. They're OK. They're OK. They are OK. They're on the winch to go back up. Well, this is not... This is not nothing broken and nobody unconscious, but... Yeah, the heartache for Frankie Del Duca, and it is quite possible that under those Kevlar race... Uh, they're under the uh, micro race suits, if they haven't got a Burns vest on, no, I hope then he's all right. they like will be in trouble. He looked uh, a little distressed there. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah. It, is, it is definitely time. I'm, I'm, particularly this weekend, it is definitely time that Burns Vests were absolutely mandated at all levels in Bob's Land Skeleton. It's not just the big guys that crash. The learning drivers crash a lot more than the top flight drivers. And we absolutely must look after the athletes. It is definitely time that the Congress this summer mandates Burns vests. Yes, they cost money, so do helmets. You may not race without protection for your head. You should not be racing without protection against the ice. They're not perfect, but they're better than nothing at all. Well, and you're bang on, Martin, and the conversation needs to start about that. Myself and Hunter Church talked about this in the Altenburg break when uh, young Kalender crashed um, as in the wake of Edgar Zanema having a nasty burn from Winterberg, and he was wearing Kevlar. So 
there needs to be a better solution. The IVSF absolutely need to mandate it. And they need to partner with, I don't know if it's a motorcycle company or somebody who produces this bit of equipment and find a way to make it accessible for the athletes and, too. And I remember coming into the sport, it was, I didn't yeah. know where to get it from. And the more people that use it, the price will come down. You know, helmets yeah. were the same. Helmets weren't ideal for bobsledding to start with and they have been developed. The same with running shoes, the same with the spikes. You know, it is a work in progress, but you have to start. You have to make sure that you are doing as much as you can to protect your athletes to a degree from themselves because yep. if they're not mandatory some of the machismo nonsense that goes on in the changing rooms why well, you're not wearing a burns vest we never do that yeah that's like saying well i don't need a helmet because i never crash yeah but, and, and as you rightly said that's off air as well people might complain about the price but for goodness sake like it's much better than the, again, uh, dealing with a skin graft or by volume else. You know, they'll be no more expensive than a helmet, they'll be no more expensive than a pair of spikes, and you have to have those, so it's all part of it. Kaylee Humphreys down there helping out with the sleds, and you saw uh, Riley Compton as well. You know, they, they were racing in the monobobs earlier, they've stayed on to watch the two-man competition, and there's not a sledder here who doesn't know what that feels like. Yeah, it's hard to watch because it's... You know, he's a new pilot still. Mm. You know, another early world champ. He's never been to Moritz before. And this will be uh, worrying moments for Pat Norton as well, who drives this Canadian sled. Because his, his teammate, his more experienced teammate, Taylor Austin, crashed out in day one. And he's just, again, watched uh, Frankie and Ab Hakeem Abdul-Sabur uh, crashing out here on day two. So, And I think it was the mistake Pat made in training as well. But it only happened once. And then he got it together, so I think he'll be, uh, he knows what to do here. And he's got Big Cyrus on the back, former basketball player. Vancouver Island native. Dubai is fried, the track is clear. We get our two-man world championships back underway with Pat Norton and Cyrus Gray. So a pair of 28s yesterday in their getaway. What have they got in the tank for today? 524, good job, boys. Dropping it by 400s. Now keep it tidy, Pat. Round King 2. Can he carry the speed round wall? Now watch this tricky corner. Nice smooth lines. Wall has got three distinct pressures this year and you don't really get onto them. Little tap, but a minimal tap. I think if you overlaid Francesco Friedrich's run, Pat Norton would be happier with his than France was. Absolutely. This is, this is looking bad. neat and tidy. And again, hopefully, not with the fattest runners in the box, but something giving him just a fraction more control. Out a horseshoe, no drama. Beautiful Straight time. down well done, through telephone, shamrock, and into Devil's Dyke. An 11th best speed from our 18th sled. And he was nice out of that danger zone out of shamrock. He got through there very well. I've never heard Telephone and Shamrock called a danger zone before in my life. It's a very different beast, this track. It is every year, but this year particularly so. 13th best speed. speed again. He'll go ahead of Del Duca. Does he go ahead of Kim of Korea? No, but he does pick up one spot. And okay. he's less than a quarter of a second behind Kim of Korea. Coach is happy with that, and I think Pat will be as well. Yeah, look at him beating the sled. Look, for Lyndon and Justin there, they, they recognise this. This is a, a former brakeman. Again, new to the front seat. And he's showing, you know, he's funded himself to get here. Yeah. And he's absolutely proving he's vindicated that decision, that investment. This is great. So I gave him a better push. And that'll be giving him confidence as well for next week's format. And he's doing better than his appearance as a brakeman in Whistler in 2019 when he was pushing for Nick Polignato. They finished 22nd. As a driver, he was at 19th overnight. We'll pick up a spot because Simon Friedler retired and a spot because of the crash of Jeff Gabois. Now, you just take what's coming your way and do your very best, and he is climbing the order. Yeah, I mean, good on him. That's a great said Jeff Gabois. I meant Frank Del Duca. Here is Jeff Gabois. And he will pick up a, a couple of spots as well if he gets down clean with push world champion Martin Christofferson behind him. So, big Martin on the back of the sled. Let's see what Jeff Garbois from New York State can produce. Yeah, Martin's a beast. He's still learning. You can see the technique. He can still brush that up, and a guy pushes like that. 5.31, it's a decent getaway. Second World Championships of Gabois did not race in the two-man or the four-man worlds in Whistler. He raced only in the team's competition where he got a team bronze medal. So let's see how Jeff gets out of wall. It's a bit of a heavier tap, but it sets him up straight. The snake one and two. 
was only three hundreds behind Pat Norton overnight. And if that's not locked in an arm wrestling match, I don't know what is. You see the line takes out a horseshoe, Ooh, snaps it down. Yeah, but clean, didn't flop yeah. on the exit. Not getting the speeds from his transponder. But at the moment, he is chasing Pat Gray. Uh, Pat Norton, rather. And uh, Tyrus Gray, yeah. This is okay from Jeff. Nice looking run, and again, first worlds here in Samritz, first worlds really as a driver, needs the confidence, and he is how close. 3,400s back from Pat Norton, so didn't quite find the speed that Norton did. Yeah, he's, he's, you know, the start was back a little bit as well. We've got a lot, a lot to overturn there. Well, again, neither he nor Pat Norton have got really intimate knowledge of this track, so there will be mistakes in the fourth heat as well from both, and it really comes down to who makes less big errors than their rival as to who finishes in front. Yeah, and they're just going to be getting experience in Europe right now. You know, with the next two years, we've got a late Placid World Championships coming up in the, the year before the Milan Olympics, so they'll have one eye on that. So they want to get used to these European tracks again now we've had the, uh, the COVID situation lifted. Now then, 21st overnight, Alexey Boron of uh, Poland, but that means that with the retirement of Simon Friedrich, he automatically became 20th. And with the crash of Frank Del Duca, if he finishes the heat, he will be two spots above the drop zone. And that's the key now for the next two or three sleds is who stays in the top 20 for the we fourth and final in, get run. In. Get in, get in. Okay, could have been worse. So they equal their second push from yesterday. And you saw their pre-race handshake there making everyone in the field look about 20 years older. Now they're in a dead heat for what was 21st overnight with Mattia Variola of Italy. And so that means if they remain in a dead heat, they will both go in. So if we get two sleds tied for 20th spot, they both get through. Ooh. Little messy through Nash and Dixon. New Ooh. camera angle through Horseshoe. Oh, yeah. look out. Hey. Little tap very high on the exit of the telephone. Oh. Shaky moments here, but yeah. he's found. He's got it under control again. Keep it under control. Alex Boron, just 22 bridge. years old. Only 14 two-man races in his career. Oh, Never been in to Samaritz. Oh, OK, it's all about being in the top 20. He will be ahead of Frank Del Duca. He is 19 to the line. And you just see, look at that top speed, 86 and a half miles per hour. He's given away a lot there. That's a huge, you know, it's a bit messy all the way down, but that huge skid for Martino as well. He's going to have taken a lot of heat out of the sled. Yep. And uh, there are a couple of moments there. I'm sure he had his heart in his mouth and he was hauling it off with all he's worth. You see, these young guys, they're rebuilding the Polish program. Their other compatriot, Linda Vrzeszewski, she had a, you know, a good run over and in the mono. And they're racing in the world in Samaritz. I mean, living the dream. Yeah. And then we talked about this yesterday. You know, these guys get to warm up around the best that's ever lived in this sport. You know, Francesco mm. Friedrich, Torsten Margis, you know, uh, Mattis Miknis, these, these huge names, huge powerhouses of the sport. And they get to experience it at the start of their career. It's exciting who they, time who they probably don't even recognize. They might know the name, they probably don't know the face. I'm just going to take one look at the stature, I think. A couple of worrying moments there. But now, Mattia Mariola of Italy with his brakeman, Jose Abu, right behind him. And these guys need a big run as well. Tenth best velocity off a 5 12 start, the sixth fastest start. But for Variola, driving for the first time in a World Championships, he must have a tidy run. So that's better from these boys. They had a 5.15 and a 5.17 yesterday. I was expecting a bit faster. They've been top three pretty much all season on the World Cup, these two together. Uh, Obu is a 10.2 100-meter sprinter, as I got pains to point out. He's got pretty serious athletic caliber. And Variola, oh, hi there. But he is no slouch on the pilot handle. It's a bit messy down here. Go on, Mattia. Third World Championships for Mattia Variola, his second as a driver. He was uh, breaking in his earlier career. 
Now he is ahead of Boron at the moment. He is ahead of Gabwa at the moment. So he's picking up two spots with this run. His second yesterday was really quite uncomfortable oh, in the okay. victory roll across the line. 106.44. He is in 18th place with two sleds behind him. Hey, and that's not much fun. No. And watch the runners slipping off the wall. Well, this reminds me of Simone Batazzo, who's the first to run up there, coming into the station in uh, La Plan with no brakes and just going straight through the finish tunnel and clear out the other side at unmitigated speed. Yeah, Delmas out nice and quickly. He's OK. Matthias yeah. OK. He'll just be... They'll be OK. Very annoyed And the runners himself. didn't touch the rubber either, so they'll be grateful about that. And they didn't roll before they set their time. I know the sled's already on its side, so... It's actually yeah. quite efficient from that. Just a bit longer to carry it back down, so there'll be another track hold. Sled rock back a little bit, but oh, what a big lift. That's why we're getting these pictures. So, again, generally an inefficient start, but if your power lines are going through, I mean, it's it's a better start than yesterday, but I think there's more to come from them. Yeah, a lot more. And again, Jose is so new. It's first year in the sport, you know. They're working together here under real pressure. Trying to make the top 20. Look at the height, frightening the woodwork and almost falling out into telephone. Yeah, takes that tap. It's not too savage a tap. I've had the wind quite severely knocked out of me there. And then there's the victory roll. Exit. Well, listen, Francesco Friedrich was among those who did this in training. So that's why I fret for their runners against the wall there. That's yeah. where my. Well, uh, at least might that's damaged. ice rather than car park. It's true. <laughs> so they are in at the moment to competitive sleds behind them and Alexey Boron of Poland is in the drop zone. Frank Del Duca and Hakim Abdul Sabor will not get a final run even if they were fit to do so. Matija Variola currently in 19th. <laughs> as I say, big smile on his face as ever. So this is a real crunch time for Mati Buhenek, the young Czech Republic rookie with Dominic Zaleski behind him. 18th and 19th fastest starts, 23rd overnight. And they had only 1,400s deficit to Alex Boron of Poland and Mattia Variola of Italy, who were tied together. So if he can limit the damage and match Mattia Variola's run, he too will be in the top 20. Yeah. Well, I know John Morgan will be complaining that that hair isn't very aerodynamic. Business out front, party out back. What is, is he sporting the full mullet? Well, I think you coined it brilliantly yesterday, Martin. Aerodynamics. Aerodynamics, uh, yeah. You need to be his PR exec, mate. <laughs> but they're taking a chance from here. They've given him Zaleski. Zaleski is an absolute rocket. 10.1 second, 100 meter runner. Maybe Annie Hofer, our PR guru, needs to do some hairdressing before the race on him as well. Give, give him some braids, Helen Upperton style. Work for her and Shelly Ann Brown. I see. In and down. Are they in the teens? Whoa, 21. Good, and not a bad nudge. That's not too bad for the boys. That's their best start to the competition, yep. and they need everything here. Look at the way he's settled down so low in the sled, trying to reduce the aerodynamic drag of the helmet. He's managed to get early onto wall. He deal with these three pressures. It's Ooh. tap and skid. First time here in Samaritz as well for Matty. And another youngster learning his trade here. Getting feel. I mean, these guys, they, they're, they're young. They need to make mistakes. Well, you know? the they other need to deal learn is how to he was not expecting to be in the World Championships. No. Dominic Dvorak was expecting to be in the World Championships and is injured at home. So for Mate, suddenly, whoomp, in at the deep end. Yeah. I mean, nobody turns down an opportunity to race in Sandwich, whether they've been here before or not. But he was not building up to this. And woo, again, it's a pretty wild ride. Hey, oh. there's a big get out of Gunter Sachs. Now, did he not do that yesterday? I think he did, because I think I remember him asking Dominic if he was OK. Yeah. And through the lineup. OK, 106.96, faster than Alex Boron. And he has overhauled the Polish slider. So Boron does not get a second. Uh, final run, but Matej Burnek may do. Dominic Zaleski may not have many ribs left to pop, actually, if he has another <laughs> run like that. Uh, well, he braked slightly early, so he's still got some strength in the arms. There's a wave telling everyone I'm OK. Yeah, he's only raving with uh, one set of ribs. <laughs> the pelvis isn't quite dust. Oh. But like we said, Skidding you know, in the forest here at 65, 70 miles an hour. Yeah. 
huge experience for these guys, you know. Here's the exit, look. Boom! Yeah, the yeah. runner just takes him up the wall there. But, you know, he needs to make these mistakes, he needs to learn from them, but he's around the cameras, the crowds, mm. the biggest names in the sport going wow. forward. If he sticks with this, and, and continues right developing, now, huge he experience. might make the top 20. Martin yeah. Krantz and Lawrence Lenher of Liechtenstein were 2200s behind Matej Buenek. And I'm Buenek in. is only a tenth ahead of Alexey Boron, so they need a really huge run. They need to find essentially half a second better than they've done so far. They start 5.50, that's their slowest getaway. That's gonna damage it, because you know, they, they were two tenths back in the push alone um, yesterday, so that's giving away quite a lot, but Martin navigating kink one and kink two nicely. How does he come out of wall? 27 bad, in his seen. first run, 23rd fastest in his second. If he can continue with that improvement, then there is a chance of making it into the top 20. It is slender, but it is there for Liechtenstein. Yep, so nice line out of horseshoe. Nicely nice. done, Martin. I don't know if their graphics designers had a look at the uh, Korean sled and gone, yeah, that works with blue and red, we'll do that. But it's a very <laughs> similar look. Liechtenstein's national colours on the sled of Martin Krantz and flying at the bottom, 70 best. speed out of 23 sleds. Comes That's cleaner nice. out of there than we saw from Behunek. I'm not sure he's got enough on board. It's going to be close. Is he in the 20? No, he is not. Just outside. Just outside, but a first time. There's Donald Holstein on the right. A first time in the World Championships in a long, long time for a bobsled from Liechtenstein. Well, I think as a first time in the World Championships and really first time here for Martin Krantz, who only started in lockdown in 2020, I think he has got a great opportunity to build experience under his belt here to really savour world-class racing and has done himself and his country proud. Definitely. And, you know, these guys, we've talked about it before, it's about visibility for these smaller nations. Yeah. There'll be other people watching this, hopefully saying, hey, I might give, go and give that a go. There'll Join be some the loonies team. watching this in Liechtenstein who've seen it in the papers that there is a Liechtenstein sled racing. And you're right, it'll recruit. Definitely. For Austria, Jakob Mandelbauer with Diane Nichols Bardi behind him. Again, World Cup debutants. So a 29 and a 22 getaway yesterday. These two have never raced in a World Cup race, their first appearance of any kind on a big stage. 17th fastest start in the second heat. That's very encouraging for two young athletes like this. In and down. Watch the pilot handle. He's waiting, good lad. 523, get away. Driver, former decathlete, Brakeman, 100 meter sprinter. And Jakob, the driver, this is his 12th ever official race. Hey, not too bad, not too shabby, having it at World Championships. So this is not, this skid there just before Sunny, so they got their start time in and around what they were producing yesterday. Well, he's already stood on a championship podium, Jakob Mandelbauer, bronze medalist in the under-23 junior worlds. A couple of weeks ago in Winterberg. Oh, a little tap before Allows him to get slightly smoothly through Shamrock into Devil's Dyke. Round nameless. Bregman Dayehan has completed just five two-man races in his career and finds himself in the World Championship spotlight. Got a great exit from Sachs. Bump and a skid. All right, they're not going to make the fourth and final heat, but they have made their debut for Austria. Ah, uh, 21st be <laughs> best run though. Again, saving the best till last. Not quite enough to make the race, but he improved significantly with each run. That's a 106.97. His first was a 107.19. Yeah, more experienced bank day. They're happy. Well, there you go. <laughs> and style points. Yeah. I think the Polish lads have something to say about it, but yeah, not too bad. Jakob Mandelbauer. There's a little bit going on in there, isn't there? Gonna, he's going to be entertaining to have around for a few years. Hopefully, he will be part of the program. 
Big smile from him. Disappointed not to make the final heat. Not right now, just thrilled to be in the world. And probably the same for Axel Brown and Shaquille John for Trinidad and Tobago. Axel coached by Lee Johnson there in the questionable shades and the red and white jacket. Uh, he competed in the Winter Games in Beijing. The first time since 2002 that Trinidad and Tobago had been in the Winter Games. So breathing life into the dormant program after two decades. 5.30 is the getaway for their final run. Yes, that equals their best getaway yesterday. So Shaquille, sprinter on the back there, equaling their best push yesterday. So giving Axel some good speed at the top. Axel needs a clean run, decent out of wall. Just one two-man World Cup start. That was in Park City. He's focusing this year on trying to qualify the team for the four-man World Cup next season as well. World Championship rules are different from World Cup rules, so they should, I think, go in the four-man. Yeah, and these are nice lines from Axel. Good exit of horseshoe, takes a little tap out of Shamrock. But again, no worse than anything else we've seen. Nameless, he will come round into tree and take these big right-handers. Good speed, look, yeah, 13th 13. out of 23, 24 sleds. Still early off there, clean out of sacks, bit of a skid. It's going to impact his speed. Good speed at the bottom from Axel Brown and Trinidad and Tobago. Axel Brown, Shaquille John, complete the run with a 19 fastest time and in the 20. Hey, credit to Axel there. He really pulled out a good drive. Hang on a minute. From 26th overnight, that is a big, big run from Axel Brown. And look at what it means. Yeah, baby. Well, their coach is at the top. They've got nobody there hanging the finger over the line, so he's had to look at the big plasma screen in the finish area to see where he was. Now, that undoubtedly felt good, but I'm sure he had no idea how good it actually was. Well, and a little more in the tank as well, because there were some, uh, some errors which really scrubbed speed there, but he's done it. Whatever has happened, if... He's not beaten now. He will not drop out of the top 20. And Andrei Nika of Romania is the remaining danger. Mihai Kalantseya behind him. And these two very young Romanians, 21 and 20, the youth Olympic gold medalist on this track two years ago. Andrei Nika on his world championship debut. He's also done junior worlds here. He's actually got more knowledge of the track than older rival Axel Brown. But can he use it? Ooh. 5.51 getaway, so they've gone the other way. He had a 44 and a 45 getaway yesterday. So he's not... And he was 1.1 seconds slower than Axel Brown. You have to say, I think Axel Brown is safe, but I had thought that the Czech sled of Matej Bohenic was safe, and Axel Brown laid down an absolute smoker. Yeah, so some little errors here. Lots of lots of literal learning curves here. And this is probably Romanian. more oh, according to the form book of the first two heats for Andrei Nico and a really hit. bruising run. Pinballing through this section. Well, he's got safely out of horseshoe, rattling his way down through the forest. More hits than Elvis, and actually even Jackson more than sacks. Francesco Friedrich. Now, are we going to get the victory roll? Is he going to hang it out for speed, glory? And if he's going to have one, have it in front of the cameras. Ooh. He just brings it down. 10801. His world championships is completed. And the next time we see him, he will have another season of experience under his belt at least. But again, encouraging, as with the women's program, to see Romania's ambition to have a two-sled team in the world and to continue to develop their young bobsled program. Yeah, and you know what? I hope all these lads we're seeing down there, you know, Behunek, Boron, Mandelbau, Kranz, Nika, they're all young lads. I hope they all have really enjoyed this experience and bank it and see where they can improve for the future, see what needs to change, how they get on par, how they get on, level, on a level with the big guys at the top of the track. And listen, if you can't love it here in in St. Moritz, then I, I really hold out very little hope for you. Definitely. I, uh, there's some big smiles and thumbs up. I think they've all enjoyed themselves. Well, and they, uh, it, no matter how little experience you've got a bobsled, you will have been told endlessly and repeatedly, not just by me, about the history of this place. And then you come for the first time, and oh my goodness. Well, drama at the tail of the field and drama at the top of the pile as well. Hansi Lochner and Georg Fleischer, the overnight leaders 
under pressure from the seven-time world champion Francesco Friedrich have nearly doubled their overnight advantage and they have one handle on the gold right now. That's it, just but a big start and a good load. Yeah. This is a tough track. And look at the battle behind. Friedrich by a hundred from vote. Hall, 14, 1500s back. Half a knot out of the equation either. And behind them, some really excellent racing is going to come up. Because a tenth of a second anywhere else, that's a lifetime. Here, that's a blink of the eye in the wrong place. This place, this year, more than any other I've seen, has been treacherous. And look at that. Calendar, Far, and Lee, four hundreds covering three sleds. That's a dead heat. So is Dobesh and Kim. And down at the bottom, Axel Brown and Shaquille John. They make it in, and some of our newcomers do not. Friedley didn't start. Del Duca crashed out. Hopefully, those boys are OK. We will have 25 sleds, I think, in our fourth and uh, 20 sleds in our fourth and final heat because they don't all go through. Really? And that will be at, listen carefully, 1440 local, 1340 GMT, which is in 15 minutes. It's barely time for a cup of coffee. We'll see you then. Five, four, three, two, one.